I came into uh, costuming through visual arts. Basically, think of costumes as sculpture. And that kind of explains a lot of what's going on with the Throne of Blood costuming too, I think. The palette is pretty much Ping's idea. He wanted to have most of the characters in black and white, uh, reflecting the black and white film, Throne of Blood. And the two main uh, characters, Asagi and Washizu, are the only characters who are really in color because they're living in their own sort of delusional fantasy world, which is in technicolor. And as they grow uh, to have more power, they get their palette becomes more colorful. The team here at OSF is really fantastic. Not only the workroom where everybody is really skilled in all the usual kinds of uh, garment construction of all different types and embellishment, but also um, that they have um, a textile uh, painting, uh, embellishments, um, foiling kind of capacity here. Uh, which I think is like really unique and also their uh, costume props department is really fantastic and they've, they're the ones who have been working on some of the more unusual helmets and armor for Throne of Blood. The helmets are pretty authentic because the Japanese helmets that they wore um, during battle were actually that fantastical. As far as the armor is concerned, we rift off of the traditional armor using a lot of geometric shapes to create more kind of sculptural garments. So that's what we're doing with some of the armor pieces. I think that Throne of Blood is really unique in the OSF season because it is Shakespeare, but it's Shakespeare in a Japanese samurai fantastical kind of a setting. Just the, the vision of the piece is really unique.